Hi guys, welcome. Um, that was Project Weaver. Um, Dante Dark G has tipped uh, me about that, uh, and that was done on Amigas at about. I hope you liked it. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, I hope you liked it. there. Anyway, um, today we're going to be doing some uh, texturing um, for our logos we did on our two first um, episodes of works, and then we will animate them. I think you, you will be waiting for that. Must be very um, animation is a lot more. Rewarding than you know, making a static rendered picture. So um, I hope you all enjoyed the two episode. Um, so let's get started. We start by going into layout and loading our uh, objects. So I have my object. To the logo and what, what I'm doing right now. Uh, I just loaded my logo, load object, found the file, and while, uh, once it um, once the file is loaded in memory, uh, I close my panel. You can also close the panels in layout with so, and then camera. Yeah. Uh, as, this, as I've uh, mentioned earlier, um, on the first group here, you have the view. You can view stuff and change the, the view uh, according to your needs. Uh, but what uh, gets rendered is only the camera view. So you, you, we're, we're having a virtual camera uh, with which we're playing with. So my camera um, is seeing my phone. So if I press F9, just out in, here in the cold, I, uh, my my logo will get rendered. I hope you have the, the same uh, behavior in Lightwave now. Uh, if you don't see any, um, if you, if you don't see any uh, render output, just go go to record code and um, pick eight bit ham or video toaster if you um, like you or Picasso. Make it work. Um, for me, it's ham eight. F nine again. Great. Our render starts just fine. So um, before we proceed into texturing, the surfacing is something more attractive. Let's do a um, quick animation by rotating my logo 160 degrees and looping that rotation is very very simple um go to object or you can go to objects by shift o likewise shift l shift c take you to lights and camera so object now we have uh, on the third group here we have our they are editing uh, buttons. How, how can how we can affect our object doing something useful? So we can move it and move it here. To see, we can rotate object. Looks even more like a, a demo. Uh, we can size it. We can stretch. And then we can move the pivot point. So the pivot point, we usually don't mess with that, unless in certain cases. 
go through some other time. And and if I okay, let's uh, I, I I've decided okay, I've played enough with my log when I want it back where it was. So I'll go reset. I reset. Mode I have messed with. Okay. Or like I I can also do have the nasty things to here. I haven't keyframed it yet. So I, I can go back by either doing an um a forward key cursor key like right right cursor key and left again and then I am back at my at frame number zero. Okay. Um there is there are also the uh, the uh, the um, coordination um, the dimension constraints here. So let's say I move my object freely, but let's say I want to find to I, I want to do a, a more um, constrained motion translation. So let's say I want to move x. So it only moves now. My object is towards the x axis, z axis. Back and forth. Again, resetting. Act by. Okay. Um. Another thing about moving and rotating and everything related to moving your layout. The left mouse button moves the object the X and Z axis. So to move your object on the y axis press the right mouse okay so of course it's pretty obvious because your your um your mouse only let's say your your mouse ball or your mouse sensor um is a two dimension it moves only on two di dimensions you cannot actually change the height of your mouse which would, would be cool if we were having three-dimensional screens. But probably in the near future. Um, so let's go back. We reset, we're resetting our, um, our movements here. So we have everything as it was before. Um, so far, are there any questions? Oh, by the way, today we we were doing some um, live chatting as well. So I'm going to be having both the text chat for those who who, who are not going to having a, a, their Discord today, as well as the Discord chat. So I'll just activate that for the time, just now. Let me. So I guess um, I am heard on Discord as well. Um, one small request: if you are using Discord, please mute your your stream audio because we have been having some feedback that feeding the others as well. Okay, so we're going on. On to so let's do um quick rotation. Amazing, great. So I have my my object here, and I wanted to rotate on my y axis, so it would uh, do. Here it will be doing a heading rotation just like that. Okay. And I want it to go on indefinitely. 
or I want to do a loop time animation. So here's how we do it. Um, I go back to the my frame zero. I make a keyframe to frame one. That's because light wave considers all motion to be starting from um, from frame one. Consider it. Uh, think of it as um, a kind of pre-roll. So it has to pre-roll to start rolling the film and then start showing from frame one, not frame zero. So if you are trying to say experience motion blur, so let's do an, an example for that. Let's say I didn't do that and say I want my logo be repeated be doing a 360 on the 10th frame. Okay. So uh, it, it's not that, that much accurate right now. So I just did the rotation on, on the heading um, axis or y axis as we know. And pressing N, November, I get a numeric uh, requester. It is here I'm going to put minus 360. Oops, not 3061, 360. So, and this I could also do that uh, from the beginning. So let's do it from the beginning. I am at um, zero degrees, November 360. You don't see any movement, but it, ha it has moved. And this is our proof here. Direction 360. And I want to have this keyframe at another frame. So let's, for the sake of it, let's just say that uh, we don't know about the 0 and 1 uh, pre roll frame uh, distinction in Lightwave. Okay, let's do 10. So um, when I will proceed on the timeline with the right key, with the right key, so key so I see that the movement that gets backwards. I just made my, my movement here. Um, let's say I've done my, my calculations and I want some motion blur. Take of it and start render. If I render frame zero, Looks like that, that looks like a static frame, you know, but it should seem like just something like that because motion blur activate. So if I go to frame 10, well, I'm doing that with by F, Foxtrot 10. Okay, this is a numeric um, activation for the current frame field here, F, Foxtrot number I want to go. So if I do F10 and press F9, I'll be having the motion blur here. So if you render this with um, zero, frame zero as a starting point, you, you're going to be having um, an almost smooth animation, but the, f the first frame is, go is going to be like a static. So you're going to get kind of a flashy start, a flashy be beginning on your animation. So how do we uh, avoid this? First of all, I go to frame zero, F zero. And I tell Lightwave, okay, I want my first frame to be frame one. So, so if I, if I um, go, go forward the frame, I'm going to see there's no, there is no um, movement action. Okay. So zero and one, they are the same. They have to be the same in uh, in emotion. Okay. Let's see how. Not not, not that I've made this, uh, this this key framing and say I start from one. Let's see how one how frame one is going to be rendered, since it was uh, it should have been the same as zero. 
frame in zero, it, it won't be. Because you have a small motion blur here. Uh, kind of. Hold on. Let's see what it does. Yes. And it in rotations to go on a there. Anyway, cancel changes. Um just remember that motion start from frame one. Okay. That is also the, the, the reason uh that Regardless of you know, frame zero always is always here. Lightwave defaults at starting first frame from frame one. The frame zero. You can actually uh, tell Lightwave that okay, frame zero is the starting point. But oh, oh yes, I forgot. That is why we go. Yeah. Correct. I'm I'm gonna explain uh, in a, in a moment what I'm doing. Um, just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. So, what did I just do? I told Lightwave to rotate my logo. One, two, one. The very, very fast rot rotation. And I also told Lightwave. Um, in every keyframe, there's a spline control controls button uh, that is. Um, what this does it tells lightwave what is my how the mo the motion between keyframes is going to be treated by lightwave it's going to be will it tend to reach uh the next frame um like is the lightwave Dragging the object or the last frame, the first frame is gonna be, um, say, when you want to, when, for example, you want to, to create a bouncing ball like the Boeing ball. So you you actually mess with it with um, the, the spline controls for having um, sense of gravity and a sense of um as if there's a tension in, at um, at the end point of the bouncing before it bounces back and then you have a delay on top of of the of the, of the bounce so that you will go a more realistic um result so what i did now i pressed the linear the linear uh, tick key, uh, I ticked on, on the linear key so that my rotation is going to be uh, linear ac across the whole uh, the, the whole uh, timetable or the, the whole time frame of of my movement. So what what this does it says Lightwave, okay, I want my rotational angle to be the same for every frame, and you can see that it is evident here. On frame one, we have zero. On frame two, we have 40. And on frame three, 80. And increment of all this. So, if I didn't do that, I say de depressed and one, depressed linear. 
So I might be having something of more kind of erratic and more organic uh, movement. I don't believe. So you see them that there are lo lots of decimals here, uh, on my angle. Okay, until it goes basic. So you you might if if you render this just uh, without the linear. Uh, without the linear box ticked you might be having like a, a rotational angle that would be a fluttery uh, kind of okay let's go again to frame one so this is going to be animation just like that let's see on preview then we can make a preview to see what is the actual speed of that and uh, we'll make a preview 1 to 30 wireframe and I'm going to be playing it back. So this is what, what I'm going to be doing. From 1 to, to 30. And if I want to see how it is going to be, how it's going to, to look um, when I'm looping it. From 1 to 10. Preview from 1 to 10. And I play it back. And this will look as blurry as, as, it, as it seems right now. So we need a slower rotation for our logo. And we do it just like that. Um, we have frame 1 and frame 10. Frame 1, we leave it as it is. Frame 10, we go to frame 10, F10. And I press once, enter once. And I tell it, OK, I want the last frame to be 30. So now I've made a keyframe at uh, frame th 30 instead of frame 10 so it's going to be like uh, three times slower i think but in order for that to happen i have to delete uh, the keyframe at frame 10 so i press delete button delete at frame 10 be very careful what in what are uh, deleting uh, in layout because in layout there is no undo there are there are undo levels but at some points there are no undo levels on creating it. Start for it. Okay, let's say here, and then I have the requester. I press help to have the help shortcuts. Yeah, there are no undo levels layout, so be very careful. So. Now I have a fr um, now have an animation from one to thirty. Make preview one thirty frame step one wireframe. So that's what our uh, our logo told it to do. Okay, and as as um, uh, uh, I've showed earlier, the frame rate can be controlled here. Play it back backwards. And now we're adding the preview and we are freeing the preview from memory. Or show you also options, layout view, and have the preview on the background. So if I change something now, say I want my logo even slower, 60. Frame 60 and visible. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I forgot to erase this. That is why. Uh, the actual movement is overlapping my, 
my preview. Um, we are also doing a bit editing here on the scene tab. Last frame is 60. And on Sixty. Yes, and now you have both the actual animation and my preview on the background, so you can make subtle changes and have your preview on the background just for checking what you've done. Um, how you have updated your, etc. Let me deactivate that and go on with our example. Now I just I turn it back to 30 and I want beat bring much 60. Yes, no motion because I've deleted my um and I do a new keyframe at 30. Just to take, just keyframed uh, same degrees. Not nothing's going to happen now. Remember, but if I go to frame thirty, so as you can see, I'm I'm hopping from keyframe to to keyframe without um, going to next or previous buttons here. The um, the hotkey for that is Shift. And cursor right or cursor left. So cursor right, cursor right go takes me to the frame, and cursor if and cursor left takes me to frames before. If we uh, accept that a light wave takes time as a forward going, to the, forward going to the right. So we go to frame 30, we do an N November 360. Oh, sorry, 360 and keyframe. So there. Okay. Doing it. Okay, and I must not forget, since this is a linear movement, I press S for spline controls and click on the linear. Okay. And here as well, yes. So I'm doing here again. And this is what I'll get if I make, um, if, if I render uh, th this animation as, as it is and keep it. Okay. In, let's render it. Keep. We, we're not going to be using, you can actually make um your own movement your own logo to rotate like that but we are not going to stop there so this is what you get by motion blurring it not that good for static pictures but uh, um this looks actually pretty uh playback Okay. Hmm. Let's get away. So that's the first step in creating a small animation. How about I get your questions? Have any questions?
Okay, I've also activated the um, the Discord channels. Okay, crystal clear. Everything about keyframing and how do you find the shortcuts? Pressing the help button or the end on FSU or page down on. There should be a, a help button on. PC keyboards. Anyway, where you go on? So let's say I I'm um, not happy with my animation. I don't want this to happen. Let's say I have had from the beginning, um, say an um, an animation where each letter. Would, would come from from the beginning of this and stop where it should be and make my my logo so how can i do that first of all i have to break down my model in smaller models no no wait pause pause for the, for the animation let's do some um let's do some uh texturing um let's say i want to surface its its letter uh, with a different surface and do animation actually uh, two two birds with one stone um and i want to uh, make my animation like you know each letter is going to be um coming to the screen From the left, for example, up to the right, to forming my nickname, and I want each letter to have its own texture. So, how I'm going to be doing that? Uh, moving to modeler, I am in, I import my Muadib logo. Remember, this is import. Importing, importing is important to understand that. You have the mo your model floating in memory. Nothing is saved. So let us see what we can. Um, first, we have to um, take away. Actually, we have to split our logo. So how how we do that? I select everything but. Um, the, the text I want, the, um, the letter I want to here, left on my ear, and do a cut for the rest of them. And I proceed to layer two, do a paste, go on. I continue to that, doing the, the same thing, being a bit careful here. Um, I have to verify that. Nothing from you is is um, selected, so I press G, centering, and the period key for zooming in. So it's great. Nothing. Did. Okay. Press A again. Have everything. In. And press X for cutting. X, X-ray, and next layer. Layer three, B for pasting. Again, I repeat the process. X. Next layer for the uh, main new uh, numeric keys uh, and V. Paste. Again, now this this is starting to. Be Now I got some from, from from D. No worries. I focus there, G, and go and zoom in and see. I have selected by mistake these. I just left mouse button over them, hold my, my button and deselect them. Wait. X 
again. Next layer. And V. Let's focus a bit of. And. X. And V. So I have now six layers with the six letters of my nickname. Okay. M U A D. So let me collect all layers together by doing shift and pressing the um, the main the, the main numeric keys a now you see i've selected everything I've, I've selected all my letters just as if okay that but so now i'm going to go to each letter and assign it um a specific surface so polygon surface and I have three. I have three surfaces from before. You can see here: Madib bevel, Madib front, Madib side. If you remember, if you've done your homework. So what what I'm going to be doing is I am going to tell the modeler that this is Madib bevel M. And continuing, Madib front M, Madib side M, and apply. So, going on to you, pressing Q or polygon surface, polygon surface or Q, do the same. No, wait mistake let's undo see what because what the mistake I did is that I unsigned um surfaces without having selected my specific uh, polygons so let's see if my polygons are what the But I pressed you much there. Okay, so let's focus on the M. Now I have three surfaces. I've assigned three surfaces. Surfaces. Madib bevel, Madib front, Madib side. So what I'm doing now is Madib bevel. First of all, this is just the, the statistics um, window by W. Or display that there. Okay. And by having this, I can actually select um, each surface. Polygons for each surface I, um, is assigned to. And I can add up to that. Front. Selected side or the same, I can subtract so stats W bevel. Uh, I, I select surface muddy bevel and tell it okay. And now I'm going to press Q to resurface it. And let's say level one. Yes. Level M. Apply. Then stats again. Press minus. Nothing is selected. Muadib front plus. Select only this one. Q for surfacing. Muadib. Bevel. No, this is not the bevel. I have to keep front. 
Modi front M. Fly. Again. Sorry. Selecting Madib side now. Selecting them. And Q Madib side M here. Okay, so deselecting everything. I go back to stats and by holding my my mouse button my, my mouse cursor on the um, on the requester here, I can see that all three surfaces body bevel M, body front M, and I um I do the, the same process for every other letter. So here as well, statistics, body bevel. Dib bevel this time is the Q a dib bevel U done a dib front a dib front be very careful here very slow take it slow take it easy no mechanical automatic movements because I set everything up uh, countless countless times yeah so what I've left I have side side u u side u verifying everything and according to uh See here, Madi bevel U, Madi front U. Great. We go on to layer num number three. A. Same. Madi bevel surfacing. Madi bevel A. Madi front. Madi. Wrong capital letters, but I can fix that. A deep front A, a deep side left, a deep side A, there, a deep side, side A, there. Verify that everything went down. A here, great. Go on. Layer four. A for uh, focusing. W for stats. Wadi bevel selected. Q for resurfacing. Wadi bevel. And D. Deselecting everything. You can also click. Um, down on the on the right of the of the volume button. Madib front selected Q Madib front uh, D front D left Madib side D There, verify, wait, on it. If layer, I mean, I pity all you that uh, longer, <laughs> longer. Sorry for that. So let's say. Air statistics, Madib bevel to Madib bevel I acting front 
let's say um use that actually this is better to use just press here after you done surfacing get confused with them um hold there a deep front front eye is selecting here left more deep side eyes yes is selecting everything and everything is renamed okay great number six focusing wadib bevel wadib bevel here bevel b Front, sorry, front. Oh, deep. deep front, B, apply, statistics, oh, deep. oops, I made a mistake here, because one of my three surfaces um, has disappeared, so I just do you, which is stands for undo and see again stats okay it, it came back so muadib front plus maybe i haven't deselected b deselect say yeah right track side q side b okay so let's see again great okay so very very carefully i go back to layer one i see my m here and what i am going to do going to center it by pressing f1 actually um make sure that you have um on your x scripts here objects custom configure keys this is very handy to have um say modular and um, center the, the center function and the center one and d centering in only one di dimension Macros are very handy to have um, while uh, modeling. So we want every letter now, since it is uh, since it is a very um, like their own objects. Uh, they have to be centered because let's say if I if I choose to rotate everything, you no, know, let's say if I choose letters uh, they will be done they will be rotated according to the pivot point how i have saved it older so i press f1 to save it center it pressing a now you can see if i center my my mouse cursor to the beginning of the lines so you're going to be seeing zero zero on my on my uh, left bottom bottom okay so back so m is m is ready it has been resurfaced and it has been uh repositioned center so shift s but for saving and let's i m continuing to 
player f1 again s two you o player three one save a lw player four f1 save as so it's, it's play four yeah d Play five F one I'm gonna show and uh, a six F one save B as with object. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, seven. No. So let's see what's going on. What what will happen if I load uh, load them up on Lightwave? Take away this. Clear all object. And start loading letters. M. Load object. U. Load object. A, D, I, B. Oh, what a mess! So now I see. I mean, that's what I've I've told told mod modeler to save them. That's how li layout understands it. So it is a mess, but it won't be in a while. Um. From the views, let's let's select my front view. I've, I've front view of graphically. And let's start with my um moving here, constraining to only the x-axis there and i start moving with putting here is double enter let's go to frame zero let's actually keep him to frame zero m next one u are you looks for find there a Object move X next one D. Now, now you're gonna see something's happening. Um, move X constraint here. Let's unzoom a bit with a comma key. Why? Why? Why is this a bit lower? E. They say I again. Training into here. There. Let's move my view a bit. Edit view. Every level. Back to objects. And B. Training. So, what do I have here? In the beginning, I had an, an, an object that was linear uh, in relation to their bot. They, um, the, bo the bottom of, of the of each letter was uh, actually the, the ground, but. Uh, I chose to center it on all axes. So what what has happened here is that all these long longer letters they their center of gra of uh, center of gravity they're more they are not located at the same height as the the, the shorter letters. So how do we correct this? Actually, how do we 
Um, we have to take that into account when centering. So let's say if we redo that, and then we okay, go back to model that, and we see the offending letters here, the IB. So let's work with each of it. it um. So um, I, I choose the first letter that has been out of way and say I select layer three as my background. Foreground for the upper uh, buttons and background. Then I go G, centering. And um, in, and now I want to modify, move there, move it x axis. Uh, no, sorry, the y axis. So for constraining the my my translation now, I hold, I press and hold the control key while moving my object at a specific um, axis. Say, for again. And it's there. I can also, if I if I wish to, I can move it towards the x-axis. That they um, aligned that manner as well. But but my center of gravity is going to be changed now. So if I say, let's say I want to rotate the um, my letter, it's gonna be. Gonna look kind of uh, uh, asymmetrical, yeah. my rotation. But I don't, I don't have any uh, such. Um, I don't have any such intention right right now. So I'll just uh, go ahead and leave it uh, as it is. So he's done. Shift save. Or I can export. Let's say export as D. Be careful here if you if you say press here by mistake uh, then the M gets written. Of course you can load it again, but uh, yeah. D export count layer. Now D is corrected layout. Um we go on to the fifth layer and we have let's say we, we take D as our template G period and t for move modify move t there control and upwards for translating on the on the yeah adequate a for focusing Shift S or the requester. No, we said we're going to be exporting, but it's a nice, it's a nice, actually, this is a nice um, habit saving. Save, save, save. Don't, don't, no, just don't um, get into the habit of export. Okay. Did I disconnect for a while? No, I didn't. No, maybe I did. Anyway, go on. And B is done. I export to B there. So we go back to layout. Now it's everything 
am correct. And so y axis. There are some um, there are some gaps here. I mean, there some letters are longer than the and longer than the others, but we, we can fix that with um, editing. So um, once I've done all these changes in modeler, the wise um, the most wise uh, action would be to save all objects because remember exporting is not saving so i save from here saving all objects now everything is saved and now i'm going to be correcting the distance between them make it to make it look just a bit more um one one object one logo uh, Homogeneous. And now I have to select each object to work with it. Here we have a um, drop down menu having my object. But I can also use the, the up and down Kesso keys to cycle through them. Down and up. So up and down is for. Uh, Selecting an object or lights if I'm on the light um, button here, right? Or camera. Ah, we only have one camera in Latvia 5, but anyway. So, moving. Let me fix there. Just constrain it. Better. Double click and double enter. The A looks fine. The D just a bit there. The I looks, I mean, height is continues to be a bit off. So I'll go back to modeler well, and fix that. B needs to be, B needs to be, let it be. So there, see, I have one hand on my end on, on my keyboard pressing it all the time. Double, see, I'm keyframing framing everything. Okay, let me fix my eye, not my eye. So let's take another. Ah, uh, there, is this. So I ch I chose my the first layer as a template. So G focus area to go and control and T upwards. Sorry, T control left mouse button. G bit more. Ah, oh. If I want to be dead accurate, I'm going to show you a trick right now. If I want to be dead accurate as to what, uh, let's say I want um, both letters to start at the same point, you know, from the ground up. So I go, uh, I'm switching, I am toggling layers. The, what key is that now? The second key to the right of L. The first key is the colon, semicolon. The second is the apostrophe. Yeah. In quotes. Quote and dub double quote. So if, if I press on if I press it by itself with, without shift, it shifts um between my passive and my active layer. Okay. So let's say I have layer one as a guide as to where I want my other layer to um, to, la to to be landing. So it's ground. 
So I select active layer. I want my uh, the, the first one to be an active layer. I select the bottom most key, the, the bottom most point. Let's say these the, this point lo looks on the on the ground. I mean, uh, and I select it. There are two there. No worries. And I press I, and I get a value here for for y. It says minus two to nine point four seven nine. I write it down. Where? Two to nine minus two to nine point four seven nine millimeters. Deselect and I switch layers. And I go then I have to, I refocus to the bottom most uh, one of the bottom most um, points. And I do the same info, and I get the the following two minus two to nine point four zero zero five point four zero zero five millimeters. Okay, so I have a bit of displacement here. So what I'm gonna do is this active layer is one I want to move is the the object I want to move. I press T. I press the N, which is, stands for numeric, and I get the offset to how much my uh, selection is going. I have, of course, no selections layer. I press reset, and this is a very interesting thing now. I do. Minus two to nine point four seven nine millimeters. Minus two, no, wait, two to nine point yeah. So I do minus two to nine point four seven nine millimeters. Minus two to nine point four zero zero five millimeters. What I'm going to get? Ah, I should have pressed plus. Ah. So, light wave as modeler can also have um, the input as as uh, equations. This is something very useful. So let's do that again. Minus two to nine point four seven nine millimeters plus minus two to nine. Let's see if ah no wait. Let me put some parentheses. Parentheses work quite as well, of course. Minus two to nine point four zero zero five millimeters. Closing parentheses. We'll do a plus. Minus, hold on, maybe I'm being confused. Yeah, let's let's leave the, the uh, suffix, the, 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 the prefix. Say two to nine point four seven nine millimeters minus two to nine point four oh oh five millimeters. And I have my answer here, 78.5 millimeters. So the active layer is going to be moved uh, 78.5 micrometers uh, higher. Okay, let's see what I've done. So this point here should uh, read two, minus 2 to 9.479. Oh no, that's the other way around. Yes, that's the other way around, and I do T, numeric, and I press minus here, there. And now, 
correct minus 2 to 9.479 for the for my other layer as well and the same thing here minus 2 to 9.479 great so now we that, that, that we know what we did uh which layer was that i think it was the i correct it was the i so i'll just export the i not my i and go to layout and it looks just great saving all objects and now i have uh, my my logo into uh, if to my logo comprises actually as a separate object now the b a bit there there so now all these letters are keyframed on keyframe zero. What we want is our animation to end like that, not not start. So I'll just uh, assume that my animation is going to be at a, around one second long. So I'll do a keyframe 30, 25 actually, but let's say 30 is just a bit of air and creating motion key for all items now created everything for all items including cameras and lights but no no so keyframe 30 has my end the, the the goal of my the end of my animation um at this point it should be uh, wise to save scene i'll just in episode 5 homework let me make a sub directory called object of save inside here no no not objects sorry sorry the scene I'm gonna saving this sorry let's make a directory scenes scenes two scenes and say um muadib logo anim scene okay so I want every letter now. My, the scenario is every letter to come from left of my screen and land just as they, they are. One letter each doing the, uh, a follow-up, you know, first the, the B, then the I, then the A, then the and lastly the M. So let's do just that. Let's start from this little arrow here, B. And now we have to actually write down and say, okay, I want, I have 25 FPS. Yeah, let's say 30, let's say one, one second. Everything starts at one. So let's make, um, Want everything by, by hand. And press zero. Selected item. I change that selected item now. Here. Have a motion but what, what does it do i advance i've actually created the motion but the long motion 30. i want it to say 
land there. I want the letter, my, my first letter to land there at, say, six. So I go to the end uh, motion. One, one, enter once. Six, selected item, enter. Then I go to 30, S, linear. Because I want it from 6 to 30. Let, let, let me show you what's, what's going to happen if I don't do that. So, so, my letter is going to be... I'm be doing a... A more organic movement so this one whoop i don't want that to happen okay so i want six and go to keyframe 30 spline controls linear okay so this letter has ladder on six i want i be there on eight so I press, let's make the final keyframe first, 8, go there, 8, and I want frame 0 here. Okay. 8. Oop. Oh, why? You know, ah, the, the, the opposite. So this is frame zero. And this is frame eight. You can see I does the same thing. Whoop. Bounces off a bit. It, it offsets a bit and then sends back to the. So activating linear again. Go on to D. So we have 6, 8, and 10. That's 10. It's 10. Ah, yes, there is a keyframe here. I. Let me fix beginning. Keyframe 30 is going to be linear. 10. But keyframe 0 is going to be. Double enter. Done. Oop. Wait. Frame 10. Frame 12. We have A. 12. Yes. Here. Frame 30 is linear. And we go to frame 0 and make it disappear. It's towards the. Um, Zero. Okay. U fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen is present. Thirty now is going to be linear again. Yes, and go to frame zero and make you disappear. Left side of the screen. Hmm? And last is the M at frame 16. See, it's there. Yep, it's there. Frame 16. Go to frame 30. S for spline controls, linear. And at zero, we want, want it also to be. Bye bye. Uh. So let's see what we've done so far. Uh, making a preview. So this is. Yeah, it, it is kind of fast, but it's, it's okay as long as it, we, we have uh, arranged, we've done our arrangement. We, we can play with creation as we'll do um, in our ne next step. Let's see it so much. 
Now, another fact to consider is that every object we have here, we have, we have told it to start from frame zero. So its motion starts from frame zero. So for objects that move a longer distance, they make they um they have a say a higher velocity than other than say the b here um has 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 a greater speed than the m here so how how to fix that actually it's quite simple if you have um say the letter that starts first, say B, the letter that starts first should start at, uh, at frame zero. So every other letter's start motion should uh, actually uh, be moved. Uh, f forward in time according to their end according to uh, their landing time frame so if my b lands at six if its motion lands at six so it's from zero to six that it's moving. Uh, the next letter should uh, the next letter should be from uh, two to eight not from zero to eight so if I, we do this, actually, I have I selected, and my current frame is zero, and I want it to start at two. So I make a keyframe that will be the same as zero, but at two. If I go forward, one, one keyframe. And what I want to do is I want to tell it, okay, stay to two, uh, from from zero without taking into account any spline any uh, drags and pushes from the rest of the motion. So that is done. So from zero to two, I is going to stay there. And we go on the next one. They go to F zero. So you have uh, start frames zero for D. Oops, sorry. What did I do? Zero for two, yes. Two, eight. Yeah, yeah, this is I two. D starts at four. So we say four, keyframe four. We go to keyframe four, press S, in air, the start frame. I want it to stay there back to zero uh, to frame zero a what did i start at six zero the same keyframe as six go to keyframe six and s linear again q keyframe zero this time that will be eight to 8 tell, tell it to stay there hold again 0 uh, m m starts at 10 sorry on request not make a keyframe first edit the keyframe spline controls to linear and let's make a preview see what we've done so, Okay. So that looks a bit, a, a lot more uh, correct. So, okay. And I can also uh, be more accurate if, if I want to uh, by um, calculating the distance. They are calculating that the distance they, they all are going to, to be traveling at frame zero 
this is frame zero. How they, they um, so if I'm if if I want to be um totally correct, I can make each letter at their start position as they should be at, at their end position. So forming the logo there or six. Oh, sorry. Ah, eight. Eight at eight at four. Want you at eight. Um. U zero eight zero and eight <clears throat> three and the M last there zero ten and we go back to their um their um spline controls next keyframe is ten Hold on. Yes. Zero ten. Next one. Zero eight. Stays there. See? Waits for its turn to start moving. Sorry. Next. We just verify that um dinner is on also. Zero eight. Now that that will be zero six. Great. On. Okay. Zero four. Correct. I. Zero two. Correct. And. Zero. Okay. We any effect um we we save that why did blog anim save that that anim um are there any questions so far let me unmute so are there any questions so far So far, so good. Brian Adams. Okay, then. Muting. So let us see how this is going to be. Oh, this is the wrong camera view. So this is my camera view. I didn't. I haven't made any cha changes, but may ha we may have to do. definitely going to do some changes. Okay, so in the preview, I go to camera. I want to view the camera. I want to edit the camera, and let's constrain that only the Z, the, the Z axis, depth axis, and back up a bit. Also, I want to see end of the. And moving back a bit. I can also turn on option field chart to if I'm on the center of everything. And turn on the X, turn off Z and on to Correct. 
Yes, sir. And my camera, that's a keyframe at zero frame. Okay. So let's do a preview again. Oh, what happened there? Wow. Now that that's because I have done I have I had performed a keyframe for all keys somewhere at the beginning if you so that's very this is very easy to fix if I go to the keyframe zero is what I want to keep. Keyframe 30 is a hit or the so preview again. Up. So this is this is okay, but I don't like the thing that um, when the letters are resting, they are vi visible. So I, I don't I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to have black or complete background. Let's say my, my, my camera is correct here. So let's um letter is the, the, the D letter. So I want to move at frames the emotions, I want to move the whole text uh towards the the left. So um it's gonna be a fast again, but anyway, I'm going to strive for perfection. Uh, sometimes it's frustrating because you said, "Oh no, I haven't done," it. and you forget, and then um, become, become ang angry and leave. Just take it easy, save everything, go get get a cup of coffee, drink some some water, you know, some vodka. Uh, this is not vodka. Th this is water. Yeah. Swear loudly so that no one will um, understand if you're sane or not. And go on, you know, when you have had your time, your relaxation. Because 3D is very, it can be very frustrating if you're learning something, if you are, or if you're tired, or if, I don't know, you have other things in mind. So you can f forget things that. Yeah, you should have taken into account in the um anyway now we're going to be introducing the motion graph the motion graph is a, a chart when you see um a two dimensional um motion through time as in frames and di dimension for each dimension so we are going to send we are going to send each letter, say, how much? Let's take I see here, minus 1.6, say minus 1.7, minus 1 point, minus 1.8. Wait, one minus one point point nine. Okay. So my B is going to be at minus one point nine. Graph. And when I go in the motion graph, there are some very cool things I can I can do. On the top side, you on on the top the as The topic uh, motion graph for B light wave O. No, what what object? And right now, what we are going to be doing, uh, these things here, mouse functions that are they are going to be ed editing our keyframe. 
these are our key keyframes. So I have a keyframe at zero for the B1, the, the B OB1, for the B uh, logo, for the B letter. Then if I go to the right, then okay. And spline controls are also accessible uh, here. S for the same. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to I want to displace my the starting movement of my object. So let's start by B, and we did uh, from minus one point six. We have that minus one point nine was adequate. Write that down. Fine. And use oh done. Uh, this is important to notice that it was one point six. Let's say it was minus one point six in M1, minus one point nine. So it was minus point three difference. So I have to all place all other letters to my uh, minus three. Uh, going on, I one has up I object motion graph. Now I have minus 2.04. So I want it to go to minus 0.34 at the frame zero and at frame here minus 2.34. Here, D, light wave object. Again, again, we're editing the X position. Okay. So from minus 2.4, we want minus 7. And here, A, motion graph. X minus two point nine minus three point minus three to everything. You and three point five minus three. Eight. America also as well works here quite. So let's say I am at a keyframe and I edit without moving. Here I press press N and I have a castle in. Okay, minus three eight. And last edit. I'm editing M. M letter minus four point one. Minus point three, minus four point four, n in minus four point four, same n on point four. Use motion and see. So the, we we uh, achieved uh, the starting point. The whole lo the whole logo. Point three two. If we are satisfied with that, we go ahead and save the scene. Logo and go back to the camera. Okay, the camera two here or six keypad. But and make a preview. See, have a cheap. Ah. Amazing. You will you will be the judge of that. Right, okay. Oop. Thing is that now I I have I have the whole um motion incomplete 
at there at frame 16 but frame 16 and uh, onwards is not on plus that it my But what what can I do about it? I can shift all keys towards thirty from sixteen to thirty, so that my motion would be more smooth and it will take longer time uh, than the one that is taking right. And I go to scene and I shift all I scale. Sorry, I I, I scale all keys. And I, ha I get a warning here. This option will affect every motion and envelope in the scene. Proceed with scale. And I say yes. Alternatively, I could very well do that for every letter motion. So there is also a scale key. Okay. So let's uh, see what will happen. No, the, let, let's say the safe approach, even if. So I go, I will do that for every letter. And again, B, let's start with the last one, motion graph. Now I have to observe here that my, see, I have zero to six. Now we have to think about. It. Now, since the last letter moving is the M, first one, I have to start from there. See what here, and the okay. I have a motion from ten in plus this, and say I want the motion to start at 10 and and at 30 so i want to 10 to, to 16 to be scaled 30 and this is what we're going to do uh, we are going to be editing this so 10 to 16 And scaling frames by 1.0. 1.0, it doesn't do 1.0. Uh, 2.0 uh, takes thin, thin, the, the motion from 10 to 10, 12, 22. Let's do it. Number two. Then we can cancel change. We can scale the frames, time, and we can scale the values. Placement. So right now we're going to be needing frame scale attribute. So if I calculate correctly, this will uh, end at uh, 22. From 10 in, it will 10 to 20. So let's will be the case yeah and i was correct okay but this is not uh this is not enough for for us so i cancel the changes we want it to go up to 30 because this is the last letter and i want the last letter to land at the last frame so i scale the keys again then and I have six frames as a hundred percent value. Um, from ten to thirty, I need six, twelve, uh, eighteen. I think I need three point something, but let's do it. 28 
which is quite near our um, uh, the result we want to achieve. Let's go to uh, 0 to th no, 10 to 16 at 3.2. 29 yeah okay cancel scale there's no undo here by the way let, let me see oh the, so i have to be and and again i think 3.4 scale keys then to Yes, so 3.4 is the value I want for every um, for every letter to have their motions scaled. 3.4 is what I want to do. So use motion and then going to you again. Observe uh the value the keyframe values here from 8 to 14 from 8 to 14 3.4 sorry 3.4 yeah what did i say uh scale keys no again i forgot it was 8 to 14 scale keys 8 14 3.4 so this will end at 28, exactly. Three point and motion graph again. Scale keys. No wait. Before scaling keys, six to eight to twelve. Six, twelve. Scaling three point four. A D. Sorry, there. 4 to 10, scaling. 4 to 10, 3.4. There. Exposition 2 to 8, scale. 2 to 8, 3.4. Use. And the last one, I hope you're not too tired to try to this. Um, scale key, hold, stop, zero to six, scaling, zero, six, 3.4. And look what's going on here. Um, I wanted to, I want, I, I wanted uh, even frame zero to. Be di display. Oh wait, this is correct. No, this is correct. Just uh, forget I said. So with everything done, let's let's do a preview. See how more smoothly it is. Wow, at twenty five frames, this is. Whoop. Hey, free preview, save scene, and very nice. Uh, are there any questions up to now? Uh, Walker has said something. Have it. I, I don't know how early. Asked this. Of course, it's taken. 
Anyway, um, now uh, animating this one is how this looks while ray tracing. So let's go up and and do um, camera. And the motion blur you can have. And wow, this looks very nice. Okay. So then, if I want, if I'm on um, uh, on, on UAE, I can record in T and export plugin here. Export a doing here and so I'll go anime and save this one thirty frames, etc. Okay. So yeah. So that's about it for animating. Um, we're almost two hours. Um, we should be doing some texturing as well, but uh, we'll, we'll do it for next time because I wanted to go through uh, primitives as, as we're going to get a bit next uh, episode. Um, and the reason is that. Uh, we I, I, I'd, I'd like to go through the um, um, how texturing is done in Lightwave. This is pre UV. There are no UV mappings yet. But there is a workaround for a sim simple object mapping. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that develops um so before i uh i uh, end the, the the streaming i'd like to stop some thanks for the support i I'd, I'd like to send some thanks for the support um i'd like to thank uh george walker sokanos yarla and mid one for your support and um uh there, if if anyone uh, that uh, doesn't know already, you can also support the course uh, via Patreon and for a mon monthly subscription, mo monthly contribution, and uh, or via PayPal for one-time donation. Um, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna stay a couple of mi minutes more and open the Discord channel just in case you have some. Some questions or on the chat just for you know a, a couple of minutes you guys like that how how what's your feedback Oh, that's so great! Thank, thank you, and very that's very rewarding. I mean, sometimes you know, uh, you frustrated, you want to show stuff, but um, it's a real challenge to set everything up here, and I really, I really do li like that you find don't find any unclear stuff, but. Should you should anything arise and you want to to clarify something you you know you can of course mail me at madib 3 d at gmail com here find it uh, post a question on madib 3 d or amiga ray traces com and I'll I, I will get back to you can uh, for those that have um, subscribed on Pat Patreon this is uh, 
I mean, I, I, I will be replying very, very fast uh, and uh, supporting the eventual fro uh, questions. That um, did I forget any? Oh, yeah. And don't forget, if you... We can go through at another episode how to output that on on um, non Amiga computers. Say how to find the, the animation. We can go through FFmpeg or so on, um, which is very very simple to do. Um, so that you will be able to share with others work. Uh, for the time being, make your animation on layout, save your images, and um, we'll talk about that ne next time. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you around. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, just uh, looking into the chat. Volker is asking to, uh, if I have to use the numeric values frequently uh, no no it's just a choice if you want to do everything you know as tidy as you want to do uh, have some reforming happening you know, framing but if you want to do say say you want to calculate certain uh, velocities or um you want everything to be tidy and yeah, just for the for, for the sake of it. Or you want, let's say, you working with other animators and you have you all have agreed to a convention. Then it's mostly numeric keys, uh, numeric inputs that will save you a lot a lot of time. Um, yes. So that's about it. Thank you guys. Bye bye. And cheers.